Mary Mead. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are working on a psalm spell today, and today we're working on psalm number 20. And psalm number 20 is uh, great for anybody in the armed forces uh, before going into any kind of combat. Uh, protecting you from from uh, from harm in combat. It's also used for people that are going to court to receive a favorable verdict, especially if you are innocent. <laughs> and then it's also used uh, traditionally for receiving blessings from on high. And that's what we're going to be working on today is just receiving, not just, we're receiving blessings from on high today. So you might want to consider what what area of life you feel you could use blessings. The way we work these psalm spells is very simple and very effective. We take the psalm in question and we recite it out loud all the way through once without stopping. We call this an incantation. And then the second step of this formula is to go back through that same psalm and to search through each verse and to find hidden occult meanings within each verse. And by that searching and the digging and the finding and contemplating and then applying those ideas to the issue at hand, we are in a very real sense taking those magical seeds that we're finding and planting them deeply inside the fertile earth of our minds. And those seeds take root and they grow and they actually bear fruit after their kind. And that's what we're going to do right now. And so here we go with Psalm number 20. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart, and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know that I the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. All right, so now we're just going to work our way through this fairly brief but very powerful psalm here. It starts out with, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. Now, this psalmist is actually speaking to us individually in this moment here. So that's a good way to think of this is, is uh, oftentimes we are the psalmist speaking the name uh, of the Lord or, or speaking to the Lord in, in uh, um, directly. But instead, we are listening to the psalmist teach us here. So the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. So anytime you're having trouble, in, in our case, we're talking the trouble, which is would be uh, anything that we need blessings or that we are asking for these blessings for. So the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. So the Lord does hear us when we're in trouble, right? And the name of the God. So what is the name of something in the Psalms? And the name of something in the Psalms is its nature. So what we want to consider here when we're working this psalm is the name of the God of Jacob is the nature of the God of Jacob. And who is Jacob? Jacob is us. It's especially us as we are uh, flawed individuals, as we have character defects. We are not perfect in this world. We were created perfect, but the way we express in this world is is not perfect. And so, in in the the stories of the Bible, Jacob had some very very big character defects, probably much bigger than you or I ever will. <laughs> and yet, he overcame them. And in re- regardless of all of that, the Lord of the Psalms uh, renamed Jacob Israel and said, "You are no longer that person. You are now." who you really are, who I created you to be. So it doesn't it doesn't matter if you have character defects. It doesn't matter if you have flaws. It doesn't matter that you make mistakes. What matters is that you were created perfect and that you want to overcome those. You want to overcome those. So by yourself, you're not going to be able to um, overcome all that stuff, but with the the help of this infinite intelligence, 
you will. So the name of God, of the name of the God of Jacob, defend thee. The nature of the God who created you. What is the nature of the God who created you? Well, the, the nature of the God that created you is infinite spirit, infinite life, infinite love, perfect love, infinite divine truth, divine law, divine principle, infinite extension, infinite light, infinite soul, infinite intelligence, knows all, sees all, knows how to create babies out of embryos, knows how to sprout seeds out of the ground, knows how to create solar systems and planets that revolve around a central sun. That's the nature. That is the name of the God of Jacob, considering those things. Now, just by considering those things, you are working this magic. You are planting those seeds. So, the more that you can contemplate this, the deeper and the, uh, uh, you will plant those seeds and the, and the more of those seeds that you will plant. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. So, the sanctuary is that place where everything is permanently perfect. That is the place where y- you and heaven start to come together. You and, and the idea of heaven become one in the sanctuary. That is the, that is the meeting place. And that is in your mind. It's not a place out in the world. It's a place in your mind. So help from the sanctuary is that part of your mind that, that is connected to your infinite good and where all help comes. All help comes to you through that, through that connection to infinite intelligence. Strengthening me out of Zion, meaning Zion is that the, uh, the most exalted part of your mind. So the entirety of that exalted part of your mind is strengthened. You're strengthened out of that because of who you are and how you were created, why you were created. You were created as an extension of infinite love. You were, you were created as an extension of infinite perfection. So you remain the way you were created. But our, our experiences at this earth don't seem to reflect how we were created. But when we are having help sent from the sanctuary to, be, to strengthen us out of Zion, what we are in effect doing is uh, being returned to who we really are outside of these imperfections, outside of these illusions, outside of the, of the, uh, the problems of this world. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, see law. Okay, so when we are giving offerings to the Lord and burnt sacrifices, let's talk about that for a moment, because the offerings that we give to God, you know, it's nice if you burn incense, it's nice if you put food out for your ancestors and all that stuff, it's fine, it's nice, you can do that, there's nothing wrong with that, you can, you can do that, but God doesn't need that. God doesn't expect that. I mean, it's nice for you. If it feels good, do it. Definitely. We're not saying don't do that. But God's, that's not what this is talking about. The, the, the sacrifices, uh, uh, the burnt sacrifices are like incense. And also back then, also they were burnt, uh, you know, they, they were livestock and things like that. Um, the fire, the fire in ancient cultures, rep- and still does, represents the life force. And anything that you return to the fire you're returning to God. And so, what you're giving to the fire, you're asking for more of. And so, that's why when you are working magic or or any kind of prayer work, anything like this, the fire of your burnt sacrifices is your enthusiasm, is your passion, is the the um, the the your will your willpower your will to to be one with your highest good so when you're burning your sacrifices that means that you are you are giving back to that that primal fire that which you want more of and so when you approach that altar in your mind to do this you want to make sure that you exalt your your highest possible ideas, your highest possible emotions, everything that, that, that you want to have more and more of, that's what you're giving back. That's what you're giving back to, to, uh, to God. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. 
So you don't want to give God something that you don't want more of. You don't want to you don't want to start thinking about how bad everything is and how rotten everything is and you need to be saved from all this horrible stuff when you are in that sanctuary. No, you want to exalt your mind and think of what you do want and you want to think of it with passion. That's a burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Um so when we're when we're saying grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all, and fulfill all thy counsel. Now the heart of God, what's the heart of God? The heart of God is the is is the truth of all the universe. It is the life force. It's the one true power of the universe. So there's a place where God's heart and our heart are joined, and that's the place where in we are in perpetual creation. We are being created by God. If you want to think of that and feel that and experience that while you're working this psalm, you're going to bore through these these problems. You're going to get that blessing, those blessings that you need immediately because those blessings are already being fulfilled. They are already being poured out upon you. It's just our consciousness needs to be aware of them. And that's how we grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Fulfill all thy counsel. There is nothing that you, that you need. There's no blessings that you require that are not there already. There is no problem that you don't have access to to the direction out of which to, 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 to find freedom. So whatever instruction you need, whatever counsel you need, whatever you need is already here for you. Help has been given you. You don't need to supplicate. You don't need to do anything except for receive it and recognize where it is. And that is in that exalted place in your mind. We will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. So to rejoice and to have banners, that means to, that, that we are letting it be known to all the world. Now the world is in our mind. So all of our thought forms that we are saved. Our salvation has come and we are rejoicing in it. Now, what is salvation? Well, salvation isn't some sort of religious term for us. Salvation is the solving of any problem, whatever it is. So, if you are hungry, your salvation is some sort of food, right? If you are in prison, your salvation is is freedom. If you are sick, your salvation is health. If you if, if you feel overweight, your salvation, your salvation is, is, is coming to your perfect weight, if you are lonesome, salvation is companionship. Okay, so let's think of that practically. And when you think of things practically, then that then you are exalted because you're not setting something up that's 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 uh, uh, pointless. You, you're not thinking some sort of nebulous idea of what salvation is. Salvation is very concrete. So we will rejoice in thy salvation. So you're going to give joy. You are rejoicing now that it is, has happened, even before you've seen the, the manifestation of it in the physical. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banner. So the nature of God, thinking of those qualities of God over and over and over again. That is the magic. That is the planting of the seeds. And those banners that go up for the name, the name of God is the, uh, uh, those, those banners are like signposts to tell the world that something is true. When you put up a banner, it's like you're letting everybody know what is what. And so, because you put up those banners, that means that you know that you have gotten what you need. You know that your needs are met. There is nothing for you to do. It's already happened. Therefore, the manifestations just happen naturally. Uh, the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. And that is just a natural outgrowth of that. So once you get those banners up, meaning, yeah, I know this, uh, my faith is 100% in this, those petitions are fulfilled. So whatever it is that you're coming to the psalm for, it, it is being fulfilled as we speak. Now, I know that the Lord saveth his anointed. Okay, so you are the Lord's anointed. It's so important for you to get that right now. Feel that. What is the anointed? Anointed means set apart. So God set you apart from everything in this world. Everything. That means that you're not just 
like one of many and there's just a ton of souls and he can't remember or she can't remember who you are. No, you are, you are anointed. That means nobody's like you. You were created to fulfill a specific function that no one else can fulfill. And that's so important for you to understand that because of that, when you're willing to say yes to God's function for you, God, of course, will save you from everything that doesn't look like that function. But if you're, you know, if your idea is like, well, I want to do things my way. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to fulfill my function. I want this, 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 and this instead. Well, then God can't save you, not because God, you know, is punishing you, but because you're turning your back. And remember, nothing comes uninvited. You have free will. You can do anything you want. And God just waits for you to come back to your function, to come back to your purpose, to come back to your truth and your identity. It's so much faster and easier for you to get what you need and what you want in this world by saying, yes, I will fulfill my function. I won't work on my own. I'm not going to make decisions all by myself. I'm going to ask. I'm going to be led. I'm going to be guided. Uh... He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. So the right hand is the hand that you... The, it, now, again, in back in the day, they thought everybody was supposed to be right-handed. So just deal, okay? This is just ancient stuff. So this means that which brings nourishment, which which fights and defends, that this is what what you write with, what you what your most your, your main utility hand is your right hand. So to say that uh, he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand, God's right hand is going to save you personally. And that's happening right now. That's happening right now because he hears you. Because you're his anointed. Never stopped hearing you. Never forgot you. You're not less important than any other part of God's creations. You are equally important. That's how good you are. That's how you were created. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will remember the name of the Lord our God. That's what we trust in. The name of God, the nature of divinity, the nature of spirit, the qualities of infinite spirit. That's what that means. So you're not gonna you're not gonna look to the things of this world because those are already an expression of something. They are symbols of something else. Everything in this world is a symbol of something that is in the invisible. So you don't want to look to the things of this world for your salvation because they're already in the past. They've already happened. They don't have any power. Instead of that, we want to remember the qualities of spirit. So if you need money, you think about infinite prosperity, the, the quality of God, which is infinite abundance. You don't look to money itself because money's already in the past. If you think uh, what you need in this world is, is uh, health, you don't go looking to the things of this world to get your health. You go to God because God is infinite health infinite life. And so the things of this world will change and be altered as a result of that. So that doesn't mean that you're going to eschew modern medicine. It just means that if you go to God first, then you'll be led to the right doctor with the right medicine, with the right treatment, rather than going for the medicine, the treatment, and whatever, thinking that you can figure it out on your own, because you might not be able to, right? Or maybe there's another way to heal you. Maybe your healing has something to do with, you know, something else. Something emotional, has an emotional basis, etc. So you always want to go to God first. And when we say God, we're not talking about a male patriarchal deity. We are talking about the pre-gender Lord of the Psalms, which is the the Godhead. That is that, that, that top sphere on the tree of life that we are working with right now. And so it's pre-gender. It is before male and female. It's before God and goddess. And that's what this is talking about. Uh, They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Now we're talking about here, the people that trust in things of this world, they are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. The reason why why they are fallen down when they're looking for things of this world is because they're looking to nothing to give them everything. 
If you're looking to nothing to give you everything, it's like looking. To, it's like it's like going onto the screen in a movie theater and saying, "I want to go in there. I want to go in there because look at all the stuff that's happening in there. I want to go in there." And you just can't make it. You just keep hitting the screen. It's just an image of something. So that's why they're brought down and fallen is because they're looking to the wrong place for their good. But we are risen and stand upright. Why? Because we're looking to the world of cause rather than the world of effect. Save Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Okay, so it's talking about a worldly king. So whoever the king is in your life, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever the authority in your life is, it might be it might be your finances, it might be your your like I said, your health, it might be your relationships, it might be your boss, it might be your job, whatever it is. The kings of this world will hear you when you call because you're coming on behalf of the Lord. You're coming on behalf of who you were created as, rather than the illusion of who you think you are as this small little ego. Okay, so the kings of this world have to listen to you. They have to, they have to obey you because the kings of this world are obliged. They are under the obligation of their creator, of their author, and the true authority is the Lord, and the Lord created you, and you have thus all power and dominion over this world. And that is how we work the psalm. Just keep coming back to the psalm again and again until you start seeing uh, movement in the right direction. I am very, very grateful that you're with me. Thank you so much for working with me. I can't wait to work with you again. And until that time, blessed be.